and welcome back to this script case training and today we are showing you how you can use the mandrel api as well as create a webhook that then well tracks all of your email sending and that is what we are developing today so if you haven't seen the first video where we go through everything where we have a look at the database where we have a look at the end project as well as the details concerning this project be sure to watch that first video okay so without further ado let's dive in and start working on our platform so we have created a few applications here already and we want to edit a few of those so i'm just going to uncheck all of them and then open up here the template form and the template grid and we will then start to well, work on both of these. So on the grid, the first thing I will do is remove here a load of the modules. We don't need those. Everything else should be set because we had that set in our default settings. And what we want to do then is add, first of all here, a new button. And that is a PHP button. And I will call that button Sync Templates. Okay, so with that button, it will basically synchronize our template. So I can add a style here. So let's add a nice style, add an icon also. And just like that, we have a nice button there called Sync Templates. Very nice, right? And it's very easy because then what we need to do then is add, or should I say, I'm going to paste my code in here because yes, this has all been pre-prepared and of course set up so that we can just speed along in these videos. So right now, what are we doing with this button? This button will connect to the Mandrill API but first to your database, okay? It connects to your database, retrieves the Mandrill API, and that is what we are doing here with this get configs. And that was the library that we had added earlier, and we'll have a quick look at that in a few moments. But for now, that is what we are doing here with get configs. We are grabbing the configuration for our Mandrill key, and we are placing that here within the parameters. Now these parameters here, are then inserted here using the SC call API macro. And this is the macro from Scriptcase that allows us to modify the API setup. Now, it is important to note that if we access API up here in the menu, that we can then also add an API here. And you may know that we have then here the Mandrill API gateway available. Okay, so what we're doing here within this button is we are basically pre-configuring that. We're saying the gateway is Mandrill, which is what we have there also. So everything is already there and ready for us to go pretty much. All we need then is to specify that gateway and provide the API key. And then instead of using here the SC call API and calling one of these macros that we have configured here, we're actually modifying that, giving no API indicator, as in the API that we have available and pre-configured, and then just applying here the parameters. Okay, so with that, we are then connecting to Mandrill and getting the templates. And if you're not sure about that one, you can always come here to the MailChimp developer page. And here we have all of the templates information. And of course, if we scroll down here, we have here the templates list. And if we expand that, we have here the body parameters, which is then the key and then the label. And then we have here the string that is required. So that is then what we need. We need this here, the MailChimp templates list. Okay. Because this here, we are pre-configuring already. We don't need these files or anything that is typically then downloaded for these APIs that is then already included within Scriptcase for Mandrill. Okay, Mandrill slash MailChimp, should I say. And of course, once we have here our, our response, we can then replicate that here. And that is exactly what we are doing. So we are saying that the response here is now our templates variable. And we are basically counting those and then for each. So we're going to loop over each of those templates that we receive. We're going to select them, okay, from our 
templates table as well because we have templates in our database remember and there of course we want to synchronize those with mandrill so what we're doing if they are available we are inserting them and if not well we're not inserting them and if we do we then display a message saying they have been successfully synchronized okay so then we display here a confirmation message now that library we have not yet included so i will need to add that so we will do that also in a moment and then below that we are catching any errors that may occur so if i go ahead and save that then i need to scroll down here come to programming and internal libraries and here I have then the ERDB as well as here the ER display so I would select that one we have here also the ER special functions so this one will also be used in some of the applications but then these two are the main ones ERDB and then ER display so within ER display if I have a quick look at that we can see here that we have two functions adjust frame height and display confirmation message and we are displaying a confirmation message within this one and that then basically opens a confirmation message for us and displays that for the end user as well as styles it for us a little nicer than the default for the erdb here we have various lookups so here we have an lw lookup which we use in some of the applications which we are also using in this button actually as well as then the lw select and here the get configs where we are then grabbing our uh, mandrel key we have here also lw print and lw dump where we then just display data within the page so those are then added there and if i go ahead and run the page now we can see here that we have here now our sync templates button now if i click that it says one template successfully synchronized and there we have our new template that we had added into mandrill okay so that has been added here and that is then fully working and connecting to mandrill which is of course pretty awesome already right okay so that is our grid ready now what we need to do then of course is then go ahead and modify here our form template and we can view that here from our grid so if i go add new this is then our form and of course here on edit again that is our form and if i come here to edit we can view then here the new template information and see that has also been added into our database okay so back in script case here for our form we have here a lot of fields available but what we really need to do is add some new fields in here so i'm going to say add seven new fields and for that i want to remove all of these blocks now they may be added i hope not but we will see that in a moment so here i want to add return email here i want to add the return name and then i want to add here the subject and published and labels text as well as code okay so for our code this is a html editor our text here would be a multiple lines block published uh, that would be a checkbox or a radio button actually let's choose radio so here we want a radio button a subject is a text text and text and there we are pretty much go for the labels we would just want a checkbox here okay we can then create those fields and then we have new fields added here to our form so if i now go ahead and run we have now all of these fields now these fields are of course what we have then available within the mandrel application okay so what i'm going to very quickly do is adjust here the settings and place the input widths to 100 percent so then our form here looks a little nicer and a little more complete and at the same time add a couple blocks in here so that we can block one organize our containers there and i'll say block two okay so then we have two extra blocks here here i will add these into tabs the first block well that could be two columns okay and set all of these labels to above and here for block one and two we don't actually need the label so we can remove those and hide 
the label, come here to edit fields, and then we can just adjust here our content around. So we have here, first of all, the HTML editor, and then the block for text. And if I run that, there we then have our details. And of course, here the ID, let's go ahead and remove that. I don't think really we need to see that all the time. So we can remove that entirely from the form. And there we now have our fields looking a little nicer, plus two blocks, a text block, as well as also a HTML editor. Now our text block here, we may want to improve that a little. So let's come here to text, adjust the amount of characters to maybe 80. Now that would increase the size of the field, but as we've set the width to 100%, you wouldn't really notice this, okay? So what is important then is that we have here the multiple lines, and if I scroll down here, then we have here also the maximum size. So here I need to add a higher number because these are fields that we've created and they're not assigned to the database or anything. We want to also increase the lines here. So I'll say eight lines, okay? And first of all, this one here, the maximum size will ensure that we can allow for, what, two million characters. And here for the eight lines, we increase the height of the box. So for the code, we don't need to make any adjustments here for the amount of characters, for the labels. We will need to adjust this one. So for the labels, let's go ahead and add that here to our table. So we need to add a select here. That is then for our departments, department name, and confirm that. We select the con uh, connection. We can order it by department name or just remove that if you wanted to within the editor here, save that. And then for our published, well, for our published, this is a radio button. And again, we want to actually connect this to the database. So that we will use here again, the select. And here this time, we will choose the selects table. Okay, so there I have the selects and we have our cell code, which is our key. And then our field is in fact the select value or cell value. So I'll choose that, choose our connection. We don't want to have an order by, we could leave it in there again, but what we want to do is select add a where statement. So where cell code equals, and here we want template published. Okay, so that then only displays published templates. And okay, so now if we go run, and there we now have our labels displayed here, we have published no, and of course we have then our text area a little larger here and nicer to use. Okay, so just like that, we have made our initial changes here to our form. Of course, now we need to add the functionality. So for the form application, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to programming, PHP methods, and create a new method. And this method I will call sync mandrill, like so, and create that. Okay, so we have then our method and within this method, well, we want to be capturing a few things. So the first thing we need is first of all to capture the variable from here, our TPL slug. So that is our field and we are placing that into a global variable. So if I first of all save that and then I come here to global variables, I will now have this global variable defined here. So here I will choose this as an out and save that. And then whenever this form loads, now it's not going to be asking for a variable. Of course, if I choose in and run that again, now it will ask me for a variable. Okay, so there is a difference between the two. And of course, we want to store that for future use. So as I'm saying here, for future possible use. And of course, we are grabbing that here from the field TPL slug. Okay, so below this, what we want to do then is create our mandrel object. And of course, for that, we connect first of all, or should I say grab our get configs library. Okay, so there we are grabbing our database connection and essentially grabbing all of our mandrel settings. So if we have then our mandrel settings, we can then basically place that here or 
So with our manual settings, we have here our config. So that is here. And of course, there we are grabbing our mandrel key and placing that into a variable called mandrel key. We have then out here our settings. And our settings is then our gateway. Okay, so this is our API settings, which we, of course, are using then up here, the included script case API, and then here, of course, the mandrel library. So by using that, we are then, of course, configuring this here ourselves. So here we are saying, use that gateway. We have our own settings, and here is our mandrel key. And within here, our mandrel variable, we're actually calling that here the SC call API, and then placing in there our settings. Now, if we had an API configured here, we would actually define that there. And then typically our settings, well, they would, of course, be included. So in this case, not. Now, what we can do is use the LW print function, which is available within our uh, libraries that we've included. So if I apply that here, and then we can make sure, first of all, that we are grabbing our configuration key, i.e. the mandrel key, and there, well, we see nothing yet. And of course, that is because we, first of all, need to load this method. This method is currently not being used. So we will need to add those first of all. So let's go ahead and add those events so that we can make sure we are actually receiving here our configuration and can print out the mandrel key that we have, which we are actually assigning here. So let's come first of all here to the on validate event. And in fact, we want so let's come first of all here to the onload event. And within the onload event, I'm going to call here our sync mandrel method. And within that, then I can then define here the event that we are calling. So that is onload with a capital L. Okay. And I can just go ahead and save that. So I'll just copy that for now. And then I will copy that here in the on after insert. And then here on or after insert okay make sure that these parameters are correct because we want to reuse these later on and then we also have here the on after update and then here after update save that again and then here also on after delete so for each of these events we want to be calling our method and then passing here this parameter over or this variable, which we are then going to load something here within our sync mandrel. So for now, all we're doing is just grabbing here our configuration and then calling the API. Okay, so we could actually comment out these below here because right now, of course, you know, it doesn't really matter. We really just want to see here our printout and make sure we are getting here our configuration. And there we already have an uncaught error call to undefined function sync mandrel. So we need to make sure, of course, that we have also our events correct. And there I have sync mandrel with a double L. So I need to adjust that and make sure that these are also with a double L. Okay, so with those then corrected, we can then come back to running our form application again. And then we have no more error now. And we can also see that we are exporting here our configs. And there you see the key that we are calling here within our configuration. So there we are calling or attaching here the mandrel key. Okay and configs, and we are applying that then here to our settings variable within this array, which is then defined for use of here the SC call API key. Okay, so with that, we then of course want to go ahead and well, make some further adjustments. So let's come here first of all, and we have up here our departments. So what we're doing there basically is taking then here our labels array from, from our application because that is, of course, multiple labels that we are going to have displayed here once we add that field in a moment. And then we are going to comma separate them so that we have a nice comma separated list of all of our labels 
and then also displayed here within our application. Okay, so I'm gonna paste that next piece of code in here and it is a bit lengthier this time and you see that we have a few things going on. So this is our onload event that we are going to call here on the onload event within our application. And if it's empty, if the TPL ID is empty, then we don't load the event, okay? So in that case, if it is not empty, we load the event and it will grab here our Mandrel API. So we're calling here the Mandrel API at the bottom here. And that will then basically call then here the template info TPLS slug and as well as the get list function. Now, if you need to know more about those, you can check those out here in the documentation. So we have here within the API reference at MailChimp.com, all the API information. So here, for instance, you have the add template. We can get template info, update template. And some of these, of course, like down here, we have the list function as well, which we are actually using. And those then you can apply within your application. So here we have the list template. And there we are having our request. And that is what we are then applying in here. Just of course, just of course, a little easier within script case because we have our pre-configuration with our macros. And that does make it a little easier. Okay, so there we have then our result. So if I print out our result here using our LW function that we have created, and then with that, we can then make sure that our result is displayed. But anyway, for that result, we have assigned those to our field values here. So here we have the return email, the return name, the subject, the code, which we are encompassing with HTML code because that is, of course, a HTML editor that we have applied there. We have our text also. We have also then the published and then also the labels, which again, we are expanding and displaying. Okay, so with that, we are basically trying this. Okay, so if it doesn't work, it's not going to break our application. Now, and that's basically what a try does. And then with the catch, it's going to catch any error and then display it for us, okay? It just won't break the application. The application will continue, but it will, however, display an error message for us. Okay, so of course, we have a load more code there to add because we have more events. So let's go ahead and add these other events. So there we perform then an else if, and again, we have our parameter, which we are passing here from our next event, which is on after insert or after insert. So again, here we are in fact inserting templates. So here we're using the templates add function. Again, that is available here within the documentation. Okay, and you have that up here. So we have here the info and above that is then the add and again, here you have then your response as to how your data should be formatted, as well as then the parameters that are available for you to use for that API function. Okay, so with that, we are of course grabbing then our fields that we have, as well as then the departments, which as you may remember, we are exploding up here. Okay, so then we also have in here so we also have in here the LW print, which I'll comment out again. Of course, that is for troubleshooting and you can enable those and then check that out. And we will use those later on for sure when we place this online to make sure everything is working. Okay, so here within the after insert, I've actually also added the after update here by mistake, but that's okay. We then also have an extra function there already applied. And that is very similar to the add. As you see here, we have the add and then the update. We're listing our fields and then we're performing an SC Ajax macro to, well, a message basic. We're then performing the SC asset we're then performing the SC Ajax message macro, which then allows us to display a message. And of course, there, the message is template successfully updated. Now, if there is an error, again, we catch it and display it. So our final option or parameter that we're passing here is of course the after delete on our on after delete event. And here we are again, 
applying the delete function from the MailChimp API. And there we just need to pass on the slug, which we had applied at the beginning here. Okay. And that is where then, of course, we are using this. Now, in this case, we just delete then the template. And again, check out the API documentation because you have a great deal of information here which of course we have had to read and go through and apply to use these features. And at the same time for the web hooks, which we do use later on, and that is also all there. So if you need anything else, you can check that documentation online within the MailChimp API. Okay, so that is our script here for our sync mandrill method that we have applied. And there is still a very important thing that we need to apply here. And that is actually here our parameter. Because right now, this event is actually not loading anything. So if I uncomment that here and say echo on load event triggered and then run that, so if I go ahead and run that, you'll see that we have, well, we're not, don't seem to be wrote. So we don't seem to be loading our event right now. And that is because this parameter that we are passing here from our events is in fact not being identified yet. So here is just sync mandrill on load, but that doesn't really mean anything. So this parameter, we need to add it up here to our attribute. So coming here to the attributes, I can pass then that parameter, which is what we are receiving from those events. And I will save that. And now if I go ahead and run, we'll now have the message, our event is actually triggered, the onload event. And we can, of course, test that within each of the other events as well. And then we have here an error from Mandrill because, well, SSL certificate. Remember, if you read this documentation, you will find that there are specific requirements that you need to run this. So it does need to be online. It needs to have an SSL certificate and so forth. But we will see later on when we go and actually test out this application online that, well, the SSL, the SSL certificate was not really needed. And also we can see everything working beautifully. So we will check that later on. And of course, do keep watching to see that. So for now, we still need to actually apply our fields here. So let's come here to our TPL department. And for that, we actually want to well, change that here to a drop menu because that is better at having a select menu there. So let's change that to select. And there I already have the department name by department name. Let me just double check that department, department ID, department name. Okay, I'll choose here also the connection and choose to use a title. OK, and then here also for the published and then here for our published field, if I add in here the cell code, cell values from selects, cell code template published. And that, of course, will then display what we are going to see in a few moments. Now we have then also still our labels. And then our labels, it is very simple department name from department. Now, if I go ahead and run now, we have still our error. So, well, of course, we will have to wait and see until we have this platform online later on to see the final result. Or, of course, we could just come here to our sync mandrill and, well, uncomment some code here so that we can, of course, continue to see our application. Now, the easiest way to do that is instead of uncommenting all of your code in here, it just come to the event where you are, in fact, loading that method. So here I can just uncomment that method. And again, I can perform my test. And now, of course, I have all of the fields here now completed. We have our labels. We have the published and so forth. So that is all indicated here. And of course, you may want to make further adjustments or not. And otherwise, of course, we are ready to continue. And otherwise, of course, we are ready to continue on with the rest of this project. And of course, don't forget to watch to the end so that you see these platform, so that you see this platform online and of course, fully functional. Okay, so with all our code here, I'm just going to add here a global variable also that we are then basically basically going to capture here the TPLS, TPLS slug variable from our form. 
And one other change I want to make here is the TPL department. And that I actually want to change to a select box and then choose here the departments that we have and actually list those. Okay, so with that, we have then our form ready, our grid ready as well. And of course we can then run our grid application and then with our grid, of course, we can synchronize our templates now and see that they have been synchronized. We can then also edit our uh, templates here and use those for our project. Okay, so next up, we have a few other applications here we still need to create and of course, modify a lot of these also. Okay, on to our next application then, and we have a few here to create, of course, and I will still need to make adjustments to some of these that we have here already, so that we clean up some of these views that we have. Now, for now, let's go ahead and create a new application, and this application will be a blank application. And we want this to be the Mandrill webhook. So I'll call this Mandrill webhook blank. And remember what I was saying about the name of the application that we need to add into our Mandrill webhook. So Mandrill webhook blank. So if I come here into Mandrill and if I want to set that up here, I need to come to settings and add here to webhooks and then add that here, and of course add the full URL. So now, in this case, the URL would then be here, the mandrill webhook blank forward slash index.php, and that will then link that to this application and allow the webhook to capture data. Now, I will remind you, however, that this application or this project needs to be online for the webhook to work. Now, the grid template form also has that issue. And that is why I've just skipped running that just now, because it just generates errors now, because it is not online and the HTTPS fails when connecting to Mandrill. So for now, I've gone and copied or pasted, should I say, the webhook data here. So let's go through this and see what we are doing here within this bit of code. So we've created our blank application. And what we're doing, first of all, is we are grabbing our headers as well as the Mandrill events. So we are grabbing those from Mandrill. Mandrill sending this information to us, right? And we are then grabbing this via a post. So that's been posted to us. We're grabbing those events. We're placing those then into a file. We're then creating a file and storing it on our server. So now here, you may want to make adjustments to where you would want to have that stored. In this case, it is just LW forward slash webhook mandrill. And of course, we can adjust that into any location that we want to. Of course, making sure that the folder has a 755 allowance for editing and of course, saving the file. So then what we do is we register our webhook here, and that is grabbing our um, manual events from our post that has just happened. And then we have here our function, which is then here our register webhook. So here we are grabbing this post or these events, as well as the headers and the objects that we've just created up here. And we are using them here within this function. And in this function, we're grabbing then this JSON code that has been provided to us. We're making sure it's secure here with the SC SQL injection. So making sure nobody's tampered with that, as well as then here for the headers. Then what we're doing is we're grabbing that data and inserting it here into our webhook table so that we also have a storage or indicator of what happened with that webhook within our platform. And that then loops for each event and inserts those. And here we are using the insert events function, which we have created just below here. And here, of course, we are grabbing those events, sorting the date and time, making sure it is in our format that we need, and then basically printing that out and inserting that again here into our events table. Now, we are looking that up here. So you see here, we're using the LW lookup, and you may remember that from our library that we were using. And that is, of course, then 
usable within this application. So we would need to check here within programming, internal libraries, make sure it is enabled. And because we have added that for all of our applications, it should be there by default. Okay, so I'll scroll down here. We have an update here as well that is commented out. Of course, that is then for us to go ahead and update all of the email statuses if they are needed. Right now, that has been done already, so you don't need to do that, uh, but the code is still there, so you can actually check that out. Now, if I go ahead and save this application, it is pretty much ready for me to run, and if I run it, well, you see, it is giving no data, okay? So, what we need now is to have the project online and then for Mandrill to start creating those events and of course our webhook to be enabled within Mandrill for those events to be received. Okay, so that is our Mandrill webhook page. That was pretty straightforward and simple. So now let's go ahead and create our sending email form because of course we need a form to actually send all of our emails. So I will call that well, send email control because it is a control form. So send email control. And of course, we could set the localization, but I'll leave that as it is and just click next. Now in here, we need to add our fields in here. So I will go ahead and add five fields. In fact, six fields in here. So I got six fields. And these fields we want to have, first of all, the template so that we can load the templates that we have available and then import that here into this sending email form. And then we want to have the sender email address. We will also want to have the sender name. We also want to have here the subject as well as then the message, of course. We want to send a message to them and, well, we may want to have it in text format. So let's adjust these similar to what we had previously. So the text is multiple lines. The message is here our HTML editor, if I find it. There we go. Subject and send a name. Let's correct that. And then we have here all of our fields. Now the template is actually a select box. So let's create that and then off we go. So let's start here with our template box and I already have a select ready for that. So I'll just paste that in here. And what we're doing is then grabbing our template table and here the slug field and concatenating the name as well as then the slug. Okay, so that is there. I will use a title here and choose to use the connection and that will then empty that drop down menu for us each time we load the page and force us to choose the template. Now, what else do we have in here? In this application, we still need to add the event that occurs when we click the button. So let's just have a quick run of that. And there we have our form. And we may want to make adjustments here. For instance, set our input widths to 100%. And we will need to set the form to 100%. We can save that and then just like that, our form already looks a lot better. And of course, we can make further adjustments again here with the layout, adding again two blocks in here. And the second block. And that then allows us to organize again our content. So again, I'll use tabs, I will hide those labels and I'll set them all as above so that all the labels are above i'll save that and i come here to edit fields i can just quickly drag and drop those into position run the application again and there we now have our application so we may want to make adjustments here to the text field again so let's change that and we do that simply by adding some lines in here so let's add 12 lines run that and then here we see again the difference for that Okay, so now with our form ready, we want to add our event as well as an Ajax event because we want to change the template or apply the template each time we load the application. So we'll set that here, new Ajax event, assign that to the template field and the event is on change. So then we create that event and then we can just place in here our code that we are going to use. So let's have a look what we are then going to do. So 
we first of all want to load our configuration so we can load that very easily and we say our config equals then get config which is then the configuration that we have within our library which then works very nicely and then we want to then define well of course our settings so i'm just going to copy and paste that here again so we have then our settings and that is again grabbing here our api key from our database and then connecting here to the Mandrill API using the SC call API macro. And then we're grabbing here our templates and here our result would then equal the template information. Okay, so I already have all the fields here already because of course I've gone ahead and recreated this already. So we are then going to apply those values that we receive here from our templates to our fields. So we have here the sender email, the sender name, the subject, the message that we have configured within our application and here the text. Now, if I go ahead and run that application, we can then choose here the templates that we have available. And there we have an undefined function get config. So let's go ahead and make sure we have that correct. And I think we'll find that within our internal libraries, if we check that it is actually get configs. OK, so just a simple mistake there and we can very quickly just adjust that, add the S in there, run that application again and let's try it out this time. We have then our templates and there we see now our templates being loaded from Mandrill which is awesome, right? So just like that, you can then load your templates in here. And of course, you would want to send these to a user. So let's make some further adjustments here. So first of all, within the toolbar, I'm going to move here the buttons around. So the exit is on the left and our OK, which will now become send email, is then displayed to the right. And that makes much more sense now, doesn't it? So now we can fill in our email, choose our template that is then loaded and we can just go ahead and send that to our users. OK, so next up, let's come here first of all to our events and on validate. Now here in on validate, we want to send this email. So I'm just going to paste the code in there. It's a lot of code again. And the first thing we're doing is we are grabbing a global variable. And you may have noticed a couple of these already. And that is, of course, because we are still going to link some of these applications together with those global variables. So patience, we are getting there. So for now, we define that global variable. We are using one of our functions here, get to merge vars. And that is actually within another library. So I will need to come here to internal libraries and enable here the ER special functions. And I will enable here the ER display as well, just in case. You know, we may have a function there that we forgot about and then we can see all of those applications in there. OK, so now that has been created, I can go ahead and save that and then come back here to on validate. And then what we have then here is we are grabbing, first of all, our templates from Mandrill and we're printing that out here. We can comment that out so we don't have to see that. So we're displaying our configuration and then all the IDs. And then here at the bottom here, we are again LW print returning here our return from Mandrill so that we can check a list of our templates. Now, right now, we don't need that. So they are commented out. Of course, you can go ahead and add them if you want to. Or of course, when you need to make adjustments to this code. OK, so then we have here our save email function, and that is just below here. So with that, we insert the email contents into our database. OK, we're also protecting that here with the SQL injection macro and making sure that the template and subject have not been modified. We then also have a for each loop for our persons. So when we send the email to multiple persons, we are going to loop through each person and basically send it to each of them. At the bottom here, we have our get to merge vars. And here we are performing the LW lookup, which is available within the internal libraries. And here we are selecting a group of persons or all persons with a person ID of X and merging those. And then for each person as a person, we are then splitting that here into here our array. And then we are returning that. And 
of course, displaying that and sending that email to our users, which is awesome. Okay, so with that, we can go ahead and run our application. We can skip there the global variable. In fact, we can actually come here to our application, remove that if we wanted to. For now, let's just carry on so we can go sample. And if I go send, I must have sender email must have at most 20 characters. So it's always good to check your control forms because by default, when we add these fields, they all have limitations. So let's come back here into our form and make sure each of our fields have enough space within the database. So here we have 250 size in the database. So we need to define that here. And then we can do the same here for the sender email, also the sender name, the subject, as well as the message and our text block. Okay, so if we go ahead and run that again now, and then we can load our template and let's go ahead and send that and then we'll see what happens there. Okay, so we have no errors. It seems that our application has sent that beautifully. And of course we can actually check that here within Mandrill because we have here our API logs. And we can see here the date and the time, and we can see that I had just accessed that to send a template, which is awesome. Okay, so that is working beautifully. And of course, we see all the other events here from today, from the time that I've been recording. So we see that they are being processed beautifully and that the information is, of course, then being provided to us, which is great. Okay, so with that, we can then continue on here with our platform. We have our sender email ready. We have the webhook ready. We now need to still go ahead and join some of our applications. Okay, so let's adjust then some of our views that we had created. So we have here an event view and we also have here an email view. So if I go ahead and open both of those because they want something very similar here, I'll come here to events and then on script in it. Now here within on script in it for the event, I'll paste this piece of code here. Again, we are requesting a global variable and an extra variable. So we're actually requesting two global variables here. So the origin and the where in. And that may make sense here when we view here the switch. So we switch between here the origin and the case of the origin is either email or webhook. And then if it is email, we adjust our SQL select and add a where statement where email in our ID. Okay, and the same is here for our webhook. And then at the bottom here, we reset those global variables. Okay, so if I go ahead and run that now, it will request both of those variables, which is great. Okay, so for the email view, we want to apply something very similar. So again, let's come here to our events on script in it, and we can paste that again in here. And again, all we've done is adjust the variables as well as then the select for this application. Okay, so again, if I run this grid application, it will request now the origin email as in also the where in email. So in this case, we have person and webhook. So we have person and webhook and email and webhook. So let's go ahead and open up those applications, shall we? So we have here, first of all, our person's grid as well as our webhook grid. So I will open those as well. Okay, so with our grid webhook open, we can think about adding now our nested grid. So let's add that. And this is like a master detail and it works the same way. So let's come in here and this is then our events view. So I will add that in here, click create. And then we choose here our grid view events next. And here the origin, we want that as a fixed value. And for this, it is webhook because that's what it what this is. That's what we are passing through. And then we want here the ID of the webhook. So I will confirm that. We can go ahead and run the application. And then we have here our grid as well as then the reviews here. And we see here all of the webhooks that are then displayed, display, as well as the event types and so forth. And they are all then displayed there for us for each of the webhooks. 
So I'll just quickly come here into the email view and we can just quickly make a few adjustments to this so that the application looks a little nicer. And there we go, just like that, we have improved one of our views. And of course, we could add further adjustments in here, but for now, I think that is just fine. So we have here our email template, the subject, the person, the status, as well as the manual status and the EM status. Now, what we might want to do here is actually include a load more of these fields that we have here. So instead of actually leaving it like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a few new fields. So I'll create three new fields in here. And these three fields, well, the first one, I will call it just dates. The second one, let's call it mandrill data. And then the third one, well, that can be the type type status. OK, so I will apply those, but then we want to change these here to field grouping type. And just like that, then we can actually group some of these fields that we have available in here instead of having them displayed singular and being a little lonely. So here for the dates, I'll add all of the date fields in here. We have the timestamp. And of course, you can add more in there if you want to. I'll just leave here the date and the timestamp for now. I'll come here to the mandrill data. And here we have then the mandrill ID, ID, the mandrill status that we have there. And here for the type status, we can then add here the email status as well as the mandrill status if you wanted to or however you like. And then if I go ahead and save that, and now what I'll do is I will, rem will remove some of these fields here that I had displayed here so that they are actually displayed within the application here which would prob probably be a little nicer. So here we have then the date. So we move the template from there also. And if I go ahead and run that now, we have then a much nicer view here for our data. Okay, so let's view that again here within our grid webhook. And there we now have the nicer view displayed for our events. And of course, I've just edited the email Okay, so that is the email view that I have edited. And of course, for here, the webhook, we want to also apply that here to the event view. So let's add a few new fields here as well. Let's follow the same method maybe. So I will add dates in here, mandrill data, and then type status, for instance. Okay, so again, we want to choose here the field grouping, create those. And again, we can add our statuses in here. So we have email status, EM status. For the mandrill data, we can add our mandrill ID in here, as well as the webhook or any other data that you want to really store in here and have that displayed a little nicer maybe. And here we have then also the dates. So for the dates, let's add in here all of the dates. We have the event dates there and so forth. And we may want those in there as well as the timestamp. So let's just go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. And there we then have our events nicely displayed. So I think really here the webhook is too much and maybe the timestamp here is too much. And we can just remove those very easily by again, just selecting the data and then simply removing it. So here, for some reason, we had added these to the wrong field. And your data. Okay. And we can then just, again, adjust our fields that we have here. And then we can just run our application. And of course, then we can see here all of our data. And of course, we could customize this further by reducing here the modules that are available, as well as, of course, adjusting the fields further so that maybe other data that maybe is not needed is not provided there. And of course, a little simpler for your users to 
read and understand. Okay, so let's check out now the webhook page. So we should have that nicely organized now when we view the data. And there we go. That is looking great already. And of course, we can make further adjustments to this view here within the nested grid settings. Now, I may want to enable here the tree view, which I personally like very much. So I will add that. And then here on the side, it will then add us this up and down feature. And of course, with that, then we can then expand and then view all of the data. And of course, again, you can customize these views any way you like, because of course here, even with the web hook, we have our events there, but you may not want to have the ID or the content. So for that, you can just remove, drag and drop those out of the way. And there we have then a much cleaner view for us to manage. Okay, so of course we want to apply then here also the same for our grid persons. So let's add here also another nested grid in here. And this time I will leave the advanced, advanced grid option so we can see that. And here for the persons, we want to add here the email view. So let's add here email view, leave the advanced nested grid this time. And we can see then the difference between those apply then the grid email view. And here again, we have a fixed value. And that is then persons. Let's double check that though, to make sure that is correct. So we check here in the script. And we have here person, not persons. So we need to make sure we have person there. We have then the person ID as for the where field, confirm that. And then of course, from here, we can then further customize our view if we wanted to, or we can just run that. And we have then our persons displayed with then the advanced nested grid, allowing us to view more events for each user. And of course, we can customize that more here by changing the initial modes, coming to the settings and setting that to no for iframe, for instance, and even configuring again a tree view. And just like that, we have very quickly made a quick adjustment to our view there. And it is very nice and easy to then view the data and information we have for our users. Okay, so there we have nearly all of our applications ready. We still have a few adjustments here to make, however. So for our persons, we actually want to link this to our send email control form. Okay, so that we can select multiple users here and actually send them all an email. So what we want to do then is first of all, add here a new button. And this button, we can call it send email. And it should be then a run button. So I'll click create. And for our run button, let's add a style here add also an icon in there so we can send the email. Now, ideally for all of these buttons and everything else I've been adding, we should have really used the language variables because we had added the capability of languages. So I do apologize for that. But of course, that is something then for you to apply within this project if you want to maintain that. So right now here on record, we add a global variable as well as an extra empty global variable. And that will equal here our person ID. Now, typically, you would add it like so. But that is in fact, give me an error. So I will come here to on finish. And then we want to implode all of those selections. Okay, so what we're doing here on record is for each selection we make within our application, we want to grab that person ID, and then here collect it within a variable. And then we are going to pass that using here the SC reader redirect macro to the send email control application. And that will then send that email to that selected user. Okay, so with that applied, we're still not finished yet, we need to come here to events. And we actually want here on script in it. And we need to define that global variable that we had just created. And that was GCH. And that equals an empty global variable, of course. And we save that. And then just like that, if I run the application, I requested that I need to hide that. But now we have here the select options. So let's very quickly hide that option there, that 
indicator for our variable. So we do that here in global variable, choose out, run, and then now we are no longer requested that global variable. I can choose all of the users. I can then click on send mail and that will then go ahead and process that. So very easy. And of course, as you see, we have no errors there. It passes on beautifully here to our application. And then from there, we can then go ahead and send that email to all of those selected users. And there we go. Shazam done and dusted, no errors. And would you believe it? I just received my first email. So I'm going to open that up and there it is. Look at that. Help at jamios.com. There is now my email sent, the first email to one of those users, i.e. me. Of course, none of these others really exist other than me again. And well, for some reason, I guess they'll end up in my spam box at some time. But we see that working and that is already awesome. Okay, so now that we can send to all users, how about sending to individual users? Okay, so what we want to do then is come here to our action bar. And here we want to create a new button. That would be a link button. And here I will send a mail, a set person mail, okay, because we're using send mail already. So I'll send a person mail, so an individual. And here we have then our states that we can apply. It's pointless really for the standard button. It's a link button. So here we just want to add maybe a font or some icon. So I will add an email icon in here again. And of course then that will then allow us to email that user. We can apply a nice color in there as well, as well as a hover color. So that then changes and as well as a hint hint and a confirmation message. Now the confirmation message is in fact not really much of a confirmation message. It is more or less a confirmation message that asks you if you want to continue. Okay, so beware of that one. If you use that, then it will ask you if you want to process before continuing. It confirms. Okay, so when you're ready, click the save button. And again, we need to pass this here to our send email control form. We're going to click next. And now here we want to pass on our person ID. So we confirm that. And then just like that, we can open in the same window, in another window, in a modal window, however we like, and save that again. And then we are pretty much good to go. So if I go ahead and run that now, now next to each person, I also have here a button that will now allow me to send an email to individuals within my person's list. Okay, so that is pretty much the main applications now. Let's go ahead and create some of those other applications that actually put this together a little bit. And for that, well, first of all, we want to have maybe a dashboard, right? So I will create a new dashboard application. And for this da dashboard, I will also want to create a chart application. So I'll again go new application and choose a chart application. Now for our chart application, we can just choose here a table and we have there the events table. So I will choose that, click on create. And then just like that, we have a chart ready. Of course, we need to adjust here the dimensions for what we want as well as the metrics and the metrics record count. For our dimensions, let's add in here the event date. And here the event date, right now it is on year. So if we go ahead and run that, let's check that out. Now we have one yearly bar here. So let's change that a little and change that from year to let's say here the full date, run that again. And now we will have events for each date displayed here, much nicer. And of course we could expand that a little more here in the settings, make various adjustments here to the charts that are available, whether it's responsive or not. You can also adjust the theme as well as other settings within this application. For instance, the dimension fields, the record fields, we can adjust those labels and more. Okay, so that chart, the way I see it is pretty much good to go. We may want to change this, however, to a different type of chart, because if I come here to the charts again, come to chart, I can change here the type of chart that I want to apply. And I think in this scenario, maybe the line chart is much nicer. And there we go. 
there we have our nice line chart with all of our events there. And of course, we could enable further features here, which allows then the drill down. So we have here a drill down functionality or multi-series functionality. We could change the pie, the bar charts and so forth. You can do pretty much whatever you like, as well as apply sorting and search functionalities to these charts. So these are really cool. And now we are going to add that then here into our dashboard application. So here for the widget, I will choose then here the link application and that will be the chart events. Save that, let's nudge that over a little and we can run that. And then just like that, we have then our dashboard application, our chart application, and there is now our dashboard. Looks a little nicer than just the chart. And well, let's not finish there. Let's add some indexes in here, shall we? So let's not finish there. Let's add some indexes in here so that we can have some more data. So here, first of all, let's say events and we can say any type of events really. We want to define the connection, choose our table. Again, I will choose maybe the events table and for the period, well, metric field first of all you need a metric field and that will be our event id metric function count leave the percentage difference for the period field we want the event date and then the function let's display the full date again so we can add an icon in here as well so i will go ahead and do that let's see what icons we have here that we can use we'll add another email icon in here so let me use this one here, add that, save that. And I can just drag that over the side here and slightly adjust that. And well, add one more while we're at it, right? So open events, maybe, maybe you want to adjust these. And of course you can do that in any shape or form you like. We have then also here the email table. And well, maybe you want to actually change there the open events or whatever it is. And you can, of course, adjust that. So we have then our events table. I'm going to pick the same fields again, because really you're going to change this and display whatever you want, right? So there are our widgets in here with some extra data. And just like that, we have ourselves a nice looking little dashboard ready for our project. Okay, so now that we have created the dashboard, I'm going to silently, I'm afraid, scan over some of our applications, make a few adjustments, which you of course can follow along in super speed and make a load of changes to our applications, styling changes and so forth, which we typically do within a lot of these videos. So that is why I'm just gonna fly through them and make the platform look a little nicer than what it does now. Okay, so just like that, very quickly, our forms, while they are looking a little more similar to uh, the other forms that we have created, so they are pretty much there. One application we still need, and that is our menu, but for that, we will be creating our security. So if I come here to the modules, and then we can go ahead and start to generate our security for this project. So here I will choose to create a user security, click next, choose our connection, we can create the tables, we can delete existing tables if they already exist. We can, easy, we can also protect logged in users, which is a nice little feature to add. For now, I will just go next. We can see then that our database tables have been created. We can again go next and now make adjustments here to the security. So the first thing I'll do is choose here a SHA-512, redirect after login, everything else I'll pretty much leave as it is. We do want to create a menu for our application. So I will let script case with the security module generate that for me. Now we have then here our login settings and we can make various adjustments here if we wanted to, as well as our email settings, which are required by the way. But remember in Mandrill, we have here our email settings. So we can actually come here to SMTP and 
copy here our email settings here into our project, which, well, adds a nice little feature there, doesn't it? So that we can actually use this for our internal project. Now it says any username will work. So I will just try, as it says, my um, domain name. I'll add that in there. And of course, I will then also have to add my API key which I need to find, first of all. <laughs> okay, so just like that, I have added then the email settings. We can then retrieve the password, set up the new user accounts if we allow new users at all and if they require an activation, which is a nice feature. And of course, being notified to the admin, which is always a good idea. We have then also the login templates that we can apply and also two-factor authentication. For now, I'll just go next and leave it as it is. Now, the username and password for the platform is admin admin. I will leave that as it is and just click next and generate our security. Now with the security generated, all I need to do then is regenerate our applications because they've all had now security enabled for them. And that's why now they are outdated. So that is important. So I come here to project, generate all of my applications, and that will update all of them with now the security enabled. Okay, so I will need to log in now to access the platform. But before I do, let's come here into our app menu and of course, take a speedy video again and add all of our applications that we have just created within this project. Okay, and just like that, I have quickly adjusted the labels. And of course, again, maybe language variables would have been better. For now, I have just added them as they are. So let's log into our application for the first time and, well, make sure everything is good. So we have then here our login. We have then our views. Maybe we want to change some icons there as well again to make that look a little nicer. So I will apply that very quickly. And of course, with that, well, our project will look much nicer. Okay, so there we go. And if I go ahead and run again, of course, I'm locked out. I need to use the login page. Now, if I click the run button here for the first time, it will actually ask me to configure a first loading application. And in this case, of course, I've just created the security. I want the login to be the first application so that when I click there, the run button, I can just straight away log into my project and test it out. Okay, so there we go. Of course, you could go ahead and make a ton of adjustments to this. That is entirely up to you. The main functionality is there, and that is the synchronization of templates with Mandrill. That is the sending of emails to your persons list here, as well as individual emails, and of course, tracking those events when those emails have been sent. And well, we were gonna finish, or should I say, I was gonna finish the video off, but you may notice from my screen, I have gone and uploaded our project to a live environment. And with that, we can, of course, test out the webhook functionality, as well as make sure everything is working great. So let's go ahead and run our project and with our project then running, we can go ahead and log in. Of course, I have gone ahead and set it all up. And we see here, it is online. 
sc.myscriptcase.com. So we are online here. And with that, then I can log into my platform. And look at that, it's looking pretty awesome already. And well, let me skip ahead. Let's jump here into Mandrel for a moment. And as we had described earlier, our webhook, which we have now here, at, as you can see, has then the full path to our webhook page, which was here the Mandrill webhook blank. And then remember forward slash index.php. And as you can see here, we already have two events registered. And if we view those events, we can see when they were passed. Now, within our platform, we can then come here to our configuration and our webhooks. And if I go all the way to the end, of course, maybe we would want to organize this differently. There, I already have the indicator of my webhook, which is awesome. So that is working very nicely. And of course, we could be making some further adjustments to that. And of course, I did send an email to test that as well. And we can also see that here within the webhook events, as well as the API logs that we have here. So do be sure to check those and make sure again that your platform is online, your webhooks page is set up accordingly. And with that, you will also be able to use any type of API by using these or a very similar code base. Okay, so that is pretty much it for this week's video. Thank you very much for watching this Scriptcase channel. And of course, don't forget to check me out over at Scriptcase by Jamie, where we have a load more content on Scriptcase. So if you want to learn more, keep checking the channels and you will have a ton more information to go through. So thanks for watching and until the next video. Thank you.